Perfect. Well, I say we go ahead and get started. We've got quite a few things to cover today. So I wanted to kick things off by first saying thank you so much for joining today's Bike to Work Day station organizer call. Um, we always say Bike to Work Day is the best day in Denver. Uh, my team definitely feels that way. We have a lot of fun at the event. And I just wanted to share my appreciation for all of you station organizers. It's really your hard work um, that helps us entice people to ride their bikes every every year on Bike to Work Day. So um, I think you guys create a great incentive for people to participate. So just wanted to kick things off by saying thank you. Um, a couple housekeeping notes. During this call, I will pause periodically to ask if people have any questions. There are two ways to ask questions, or I would ask rather that you follow these two best practices for asking questions. Um, the first would be when we pause for questions, go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, Brittany Compton from my team on the, on the way to go side, she will call on you to ask your question. If you have a question that you just don't wanna forget, um, feel free to type it into chat. And when we break for questions, um, Brittany will read those aloud and we will do our best to address those. All right, so before we get started today, I am gonna talk a little bit about the Way to Go program. Um, to start things off, my name is Nisha Mokshagundam. As I mentioned, um, I see a lot of new faces here today. So I did wanna introduce myself. Um, I work for the Denver Regional Council of Governments and I manage the Way to Go Partnership, which is actually a program that spans the entire nine county Denver region. And our main goals are to reduce traffic congestion. Um, Bike to Work Day is a really great way for us to do that on a very large scale um, during one single day. So we really feel like this event aligns very well with our, with our program. Talk a little bit about our funding um, and how we operate in a moment. But I did also wanna talk um, in this call, obviously about the history of Bike to Work Day. And for those of you who are new to the event, just give you a sense of what to expect on the day of. Um, we'll also talk about best practices for hosting a station. That's really why everyone is here today. And as I mentioned at the end, we will break for questions. Um, I'm hoping at the end of the call, those of you who are seasoned, experienced station organizers will be willing to share some of your experiences with the rest of the people on this call. And if you are new to managing a station, definitely use today's meeting as an opportunity to get any of your questions answered, get clarity on what it's gonna look like the day of the event to participate. Um, if you've got any feedback or comments, please feel free to share those. As I mentioned, this will be the first of two station organizer calls. We will have one later on, I believe in the beginning of June. So today we're gonna keep things really high level. We're gonna, again, as I mentioned, talk about the history of the event, go through some best practices, and we will also, um, review some marketing resources. I am going to ask you if you're not speaking to please mute yourself. Uh, it does make it a little bit easier for the rest of people to follow if there isn't any background noise. So thank you. Um, I appreciate everybody's support here. All right, so let's kind of jump into things. So wanted to talk first about the Way to Go program. And as I mentioned, we are a, a program within the Denver Regional Council of Governments, but our partnership actually uh, spans, as I said, the nine county Denver region. And we partner with other entities called Transportation Management Associations in those areas. Um, lots of TMAs on this call today. So great to see you, um, Way to Go partners. Um, definitely looking to hear uh, your expertise on today's call. I think you'll be a great resource for all of these uh, station organizers here today. Um, I did wanna mention that, you know, our primary goal is to reduce traffic congestion and get people out of their single occupant vehicles. One of the ways we do that is by encouraging cycling. And one of the nice things about Bike to Work Day is when we get a whole lot of people involved in supporting biking on a single day, it makes it a lot easier for people to participate. So what we like to say is, you know, we provide some structure for those people who are interested in participating. Um, as a program though, we actually uh, promote all of the other eco-friendly transportation modes as well, such as transit. Um, we try to get people into carpool or van pool. Um, we encourage people to walk to work if they're able to do so. So what we call active transportation includes walking and biking, anything that's kind of human powered. And those are all really important um, modes that we recommend people use because of course, 
we want to reduce traffic congestion um, in order to reduce pollution in the air and just make our environment a little bit cleaner and more comfortable to live in. Um, our program is funded through CMAQ dollars, congestion mitigation and air quality, um, which means money comes from the federal uh, government. And when I uh, mention here that we manage a voluntary effort, that means that we invite businesses and commuters to work with us to learn about options. Um, we do not mandate that employers work with us to roll out transportation benefits, but it is a service that we provide. So many of you are probably familiar with Bike to Work Day from the participant side. Um, Bike to Work Day takes place in Colorado the fourth Wednesday every June. Now, every year we get people who say, well, I thought Bike to Work Day happened in May. Um, it does in other jurisdictions. Unfortunately, because of the weather patterns we have here, we are not able to participate in the annual May Bike to Work Day event um, just because nobody wants to bike in the summer during a snowstorm. So we have uh, made the decision as a region to push that to the end of June. One of the questions, oh, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry, my slide is stuck. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, um, this event is primarily hosted by Dr. Cog's Way to Go program, um, but a lot of partners come in um, to support the event. So, it's really important to get a partnership from TMAs, local governments, and other advocacy organizations, private sector organizations, like a lot of you are in as well. So we really um, encourage organizations to participate in Bike to Work Day in a couple of ways. Um, we've asked uh, organizations in the past to sponsor Bike to Work Day. That will allow us to include your logo in some of our marketing materials. Um, we also invite people to join the Business Challenge. I actually had a webinar a couple weeks ago for Business Challenge participants, talked a lot about um, how to get, get um, involved in that. If you have any questions about Business Challenge, we won't be talking about that today, but do feel free to reach out to btwd at drcog.org and we would be happy to connect with you. Um, finally, today what we're talking about is how to uh, host a station. And so, as I mentioned, we'll talk about all of those best practices, review some marketing materials as well. But as I mentioned, by hosting a station, you're really providing a valuable incentive for people to participate. So I wanted to quickly turn things over to Blair Monson. Um, he is also an outreach specialist on the Way to Go team, and he's going to talk a little bit about this year's theme. Thanks, Nisha. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about our theme for the 2023 event, uh, which the theme we came up with this year was Joyride. Um, and the reason that we decided on this theme uh, that we're using to promote the event um, is we want this event to evoke fun and be inclusive of the new commuting landscape post-COVID. Um, as you all know, many uh, employees are not commuting to work daily. We have a lot of teleworkers. Um, and we don't want those folks to feel uh, excluded from the events. We want to encourage people to swap a ride in their car uh, for a ride on their bike, even if they're not commuting to a physical office. Um, so whether they're going to the grocery store or the gym or a coffee shop, we want those folks to feel comfortable um, getting a fun bike ride in on Bike to Work Day. Um, Relevant to you guys is a lot of our participants map their rides by looking at the Bike to Work Day station map. And a lot of people um, decide to hit many stations so that they can get a burrito, coffee, merchandise. And then on the way home, they can hit up one of those party stations for a drink. Um, and the last thing I think I'll mention about the theme is that we now have a merch site that is live. So um, folks can, can see branded merchandise with this Joyride theme. Um, we've got long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, um, as well as hats and visors. And um, just my personal opinion, I think this, the merchandise is really cool this year. So I'll drop that link in the chat here so that you guys can take a look. Um, but yeah, this is the theme that we'll be using to promote this year's event and hopefully make it a really fun uh, event for everyone across Denver. Awesome, Blair. Yep, this is going to be a really great event. And um, as he mentioned, the merch is going to have this cool design on it. Um, so the other way you can access the merch store is by going to biketoworkday.co and clicking on the order gear button. But Blair, thanks for dropping that into chat. Um, feel free to click on that and poke around the merchandise site. Really uh, very pleased with the designs this year. 
cool. So I wanted to go over a couple of important dates. Um, everybody on this call with only very, very few exceptions has already registered their station on our website. Now you're welcome to register multiple stations. Many organizations are able to staff multiple stations. Um, if that's the case and you have not created all of your stations yet, we do ask that you stop uh, editing or creating any new stations. Um, by 4 p.m. Um, on the day before the event, that's Tuesday, June 27th. The reason is when you make edits to your station details or submit a new station that late in the game, um, it does go into an approval queue. My team has to review the submission, and if there are any you know, discrepancies between the description and perhaps the location of the station, we would want to reach out to you to verify. So we're really gonna encourage everybody to register any new stations by June 21st. And this gives people a week to make sure that their station details are really clearly spelled out, um, that the location they've posted on the map is correct. And it also gives you plenty of time to then market that you'll be at this, at this location. Uh, less than a week just won't set you up for success. So as I mentioned, um, do try to register any stations before the 21st and we will stop um, sending communications, encouraging new station creations on that day. So um, just know that, that we will um, also be asking all of the unregistered station organizers. So those people we know will likely register stations. We will also ask them to do this by the 21st. In a couple slides, I'm gonna talk about the open house, um, but just something to know, the open house is an in-person event at Dr. Cog's office. Um, if you can mark your calendars for May 17th, from 7.30 to noon or whatever block of time you're able to join us, um, please plan to do that. You can come to our open house and pick up giveaway items to really uh, entice people again to visit your station. So with that, I wanted to quickly pause. Um, were there any questions in chat or does anyone have any questions um, so far just related to timeline, uh, bike to work day itself? Okay, I don't see any hands raised. Looks like there is nothing in chat. So let's go ahead and move on and let's talk about best practices for hosting a station. So to give you sort of an idea of what a station is, I can share what way to go does each year. So we actually host a station in partnership with um, the Denver Office of Transportation and Infrastructure or DOTI each year. And it, uh, our station is held in Civic Center Park. So right in front of the mayor's office, we set up a little tent um, with a table. We give away coffee. Um, hopefully we'll be doing um, some other drinks this, this year as well. And then we give away a lot of merchandise. Um, Dottie typically gives away burritos and it looks like we will probably have um, a, a radio station present at the station as well. So I'm pretty excited. It's kind of like a party. People roll into Civic Center Park on the day of the event, and it's a really celebratory um, kind of situation and mood. So we really just um, want people to congregate and gather at our station so that they can relax, pick up swag, and uh, pretty critically learn about our program um, and figure out if there are any ways that we could partner in the future. So. Most station organizers are gonna hand out bottled water. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you think about what you're gonna offer your, your rider visitors. Um, other station organizers might purchase food like burritos or granola bars. Um, and if your organization has any branded swag, I know lots of us have um, you know, t-shirts, pens, pins, what have you with our organization name and contact information on it. Bike to Workday Station, consider it almost a tabling event. It's a great opportunity for you to give away those items just to bring some visibility to your brand. One of the benefits of participating in Bike to Workday obviously is that brand visibility. Um, but when you show up for Bike to Workday, what you're really illustrating is that as an organization, you care about clean air and active transportation. So I think um, aligning with this event is, is um, pretty pretty positive for, for the brand. And then finally, we'll be recognizing stations on our website, both on the Find a Map um, page, as well as in some of our news and announcement features. 
Um, we're also going to be promoting stations in our e-blast, our press releases, and social media. So make sure you have those station details updated. Um, share whatever information you can about what items you'll give away, and we will do our best to help you promote those um, stations and amplify your message. On the day of the event, definitely use social media. Um, and I'll show you a little uh, resource that we put together in a little bit, but I did just want to ask you to tag way to go. Um, you can find all our handles and a toolkit that we put together for you, but it really will uh, help us find your station, find your post, and again, help you amplify that. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about incentives. Um, I will turn things over to Brittany momentarily, but one of the ways we drive participation um, in the event is by giving away cool prizes. So this year, we've got some really neat ones um, that we're happy to give away. So uh, Brittany, take it away. Thanks, Nisha. Um, yeah, so my name is Brittany Compton. I'm one of the other outre outreach specialists with Dr. Cog. Um, we do have a couple really neat prizes this year. Um, one of our sponsors being REI, our grand prize is a turn e-bike. Um, so one random um, person who registers at biketoworkday.co or pledges to ride will be automatically entered to win any of these prizes. So no need to do anything else besides pledging. Um, and then we have a couple prizes throughout the course of the following weeks. Um, one of them will be a Garmin um, rearview tail light. So this is, if you're not familiar, is one that is also functioning as a light and a camera. So you can record, you know, any sort of activity behind you and connect it with a phone or any sort of like head unit or GPS and be able to get alerts about if you um, have a car approaching behind you. Um, another fun one for um, commuters especially are the shock absorbing um, cup holders. So these attach to the handlebars of the bike and help your uh, liquids not to spill. I know I've tried multiple times to carry coffee in my bottle cages without any luck. Um, so I'm curious to see how these go over. Um, and then an item that I have found really helpful that is on the list is our um, pedal lights. So these have front and rear um, pedal lights. So the white in the front and the red in the back will always flip. And then it's also visible from the side. So really helps with a lot of visibility for people on the road. Um, we also have a pro tune up from Mike's Bikes which is a local shop that has several locations. So it makes it a little bit easier for a prize winner to get to a location. And then um, a 60 minute massage from Lodo Massage Studio. Um, and then we'll also have weekly merch drawings just at random from the Bike to Work Day store. So I don't know if you could tell um, from Brittany's pitch, but she is a very experienced cyclist. So I'm really grateful that she was available to pick out this year's prizes. Um, I think that the prizes we've got this year are going to be helpful for, you know, cyclists like Brittany, um, as well as cyclists who are just kind of uh, getting into bike commuting. But all of these prizes should make that commute a little bit more pleasant. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you. We have some questions in the chat and I show whenever we have a good moment for them. Why don't we take those right now? So first question is from Pizza Pete. Um, so yes, uh, as Blair mentioned, the merchandise is for sale, um, but we are also giving away some merchandise through giveaways. So um, definitely make sure you, you uh, sign up on the website um, and be entered into that drawing. And absolutely, we are happy to share our assets with you. Um, in fact, I will just drop the design file into the station organizer folder so that you all have that illustrator file and can adapt the design however you want to. Well, Rosemary, I think this is a really fantastic design as well. Um, our, our creative team had a really fun time putting it together. We had a couple of brainstorm sessions where we talked about what our goals were for the event. And I really do think that the, the theme um, is very reflective of what we're trying to accomplish, which is bringing joy and happiness back into the act of riding a bike. So um, really love to hear that positive feedback. Perfect. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the open house. Um, in the past, pre-COVID, I, I will say, um, we had quite a few in-person planning meetings related to Bike to Work Day. Um, I believe in the past, even this meeting would have likely been in person. 
Um, we do see a need to have in-person meetings um, so that you can pick up physical, tangible items. But I will also say that being able to do these calls virtually, I feel makes it just much more accessible and easy for people to join. So moving forward in future years, we will likely do sort of a hybrid option where we've got the in-person open house with a lot of other virtual calls where we can really set the stage um, strategically. So want to tell you a little bit about the open house. Um, as I mentioned, each year Dr. Cog hosts an open house at our office, and the intent is really for station organizers like yourselves to stop by and pick up materials like Bike to Work Day posters, mini posters. We've got bookmarks this year that have the Bike to Work Day branding on them. And then when you set up your table on the day of the event, you've got plenty of materials to give away that are sort of, um, you know, hard, tangible items that people can walk away with. We also often get some in-kind donations, so um, we're look, it's looking like we will be able to give away some other items for you to take to your station. Um, so just come by the open house and you can see everything that we have. Um, we do have banners and directional signs that we give to station organizers. If you have hosted a station in the past, chances are you already have these items. We encourage you to reuse them year to year. Um, these vinyl banners are pretty sturdy and it really takes um, a beating. We've been doing these events in all kinds of weather for many years. And you know, for the most part, the banners have stayed intact. Um, we also have these H-frame, we call them directional or wayfinding signs. Um, many of you probably have that as well. If you're feeling like your materials are damaged or um, you know, maybe you're hosting additional stations and you need an extra banner, um, come by the open house. We will give you, give you access to those items as well. I also wanted to mention, I, I'm sure some of you have noticed that the Bike to Work Day URL changed a couple years ago. Uh, we used to be biketoworkday.us and we're now biketoworkday.co. Some of those old materials, again, that banner and that directional sign may have the old URL on it. If it does, um, no worries. Again, come to our open house. We actually have a sticker for each of those assets that you can put over the URL extension just to update that link. So um, again, just a uh, valuable opportunity for you to stop by and um, pick up materials that will really augment your station and make it again more appealing and enticing for people to visit. Um, I will also mention, you know, the open house is kind of early. It takes place um, throughout the morning. We will have food and beverages. Um, so do stop by. You'll, you know, get a, a bagel or muffins or whatever. Um, but I think it's kind of nice to network with our team and other organizers. It's really a great way to hear what other station organizers are doing, especially since it's a couple weeks from now. Some new people may um, show up to that who are not on today's call. And those of you who have just begun planning your station may have made some um, momentum and have some new ideas to share. So um, like I said, mark your calendars. Um, join us at 1117th Street on May 17th, which is a Wednesday, starting at 730. Don't feel you've got to be there the whole time, um, but definitely plan to stop by, spend at least 15, 20 minutes learning about all of the resources that are available to you, picking up materials, and then um, networking with the rest of the group. So a couple of resources, and um, this is really not going to be a long presentation. Um, just did want to share that there are several resources that are um, important for you to be aware of. The first one is the bike to workday.co find a station map. Um, the station map, as Blair was explaining, is really a rider's opportunity to figure out where they're going to go on the day of the event. So if you've got your station on the map, you've got a robust description in there that explains everything you're going to be doing for riders, chances are people will um, want to stop by your station. So do make sure that you're marketing both the fact that you're hosting a station and share the bike to workday.co find a station map link um, just to help others find all of the other stations near you. I also have put together a toolkit document, um, and there's lots of information in there about the event. We've got a day of checklist in there, and we also have some social media and newsletter copy, um, important links for riders. So again, if you want to share resources with riders as you invite them to visit your station, we've got quite a few um, items in there that would be helpful. 
And then we included a whole lot of best practices in this presentation, or I'm sorry, rather in this uh, guidebook or toolkit that will help you again, have a successful station. And then, as I mentioned, do visit the open house. We've got lots of tangible materials, including those posters. I'm going to stop sharing for one moment so that I can um, pull up Dropbox. And I did just wanna quickly show you some of the resources that we've put together. All right, so I'm gonna grab this link in here and drop this into chat. Um, just a heads up for everybody, we will also be publishing this link in emails that go out to station organizers, and this should also be available on the bike to -work .co website on the download materials page. So a couple ways you can find this link. But first thing I wanted to show you is this item right here. We call this the station organizer toolkit. Basically, it's a document or a packet that shares a whole lot of, like I said, best practices for the day of the event. Let me make this a little bit smaller so that we can see it all. But I did just want to highlight some of the items that we have. You know, we talked a lot about Bike to Work Day, way to go. But if you do want to incorporate any information about our organization into your messaging, um, please feel free to pull that off of this packet. We've got a little checklist here, or actually um, more like some steps for registering your station make sure that you've kind of covered all these bases, you know where the location will be and that it's a strategic spot. Um, make sure that your day of event uh, plan is solid and you've got all of your tasks lined out. And then finally, as I said, most of you have registered your station. If you have additional stations, so make sure those are registered on the Bike to Work Day website. Or if a neighboring organization um, comes to you and says, hey, are you participating in Bike to Work Day? Let them know that they should also register their station as well. Now we talk a little bit about marketing um, and we will go over some of those marketing materials. But as I said, use this book really as a guide to help you um, with your planning. I have all of the important dates here, including this station organizer check-in. We've got a second one happening on June 1st. All of you will be invited to that one as well. We've got the Bike to Work Day open house. One note on the open house, uh, right here is a registration link. We ask that you click this, let us know you're coming to the open house. And the reason is um, it'd be nice to get a rough head count just so we can order enough food and drinks and make sure that we've got enough giveaway items for everybody who plans to attend. One of the items you can pick up at the Bike to Work Day open house is this writable poster right here. So let me zoom in a little bit on this. Um, this is just a graphic depiction. We actually have a full-size file of this, um, both uh, digital as well as printed. Um, the digital version is in this station organizer folder. Um, but what you probably can't see are a couple of lines here. If you take this printed document and you fill out some information, the name of your station, where it's located, and what items you're giving away, we recommend hanging this in your storefront if you've got a public-facing window. Um, if you've got a break room and you're encouraging employees to stop by your station, um, make sure to post this there. Or if you're a government agency, um, do post this in any sort of public buildings you have access to. It's just a nice prompt and a reminder for riders that there are stations they can visit on the day of the event. Talked a little bit about those banners. So this is what that station banner looks like. And I really love the way this toolkit is designed um, because here you can see sort of an illustration of the station. Um, you can put your banner on the bottom of the table. You can put it at the back of your tent. But again, what the banner highlights is that you are an official um, supporter of Bike to Work Day. This is an official Bike to Work Day station um, and that you have worked with Dr. Cog in order to host the station. And I also mentioned the H-frame wayfinding or directional sign. It looks kind of like this. We recommend that you set up that sign maybe a block or so away from your station, draw an arrow on it pointing to where your station will be. And what that does is actually gonna capture cyclists who may not know that your station is there or may not even know that Bike to Work Day is happening that day. But if they see all of this branding everywhere, if they see the arrow pointing in a specific direction, then even on the day of the event, we're actually um, able to, to grab those riders. 
So I won't go through all of these resources, won't talk about prizes because Brittany already did a great job, but I did want to talk about marketing your station. The majority of the uh, station marketing should happen before the event. Um, as I mentioned, there are some day of tactics that you can employ, like putting up that wayfinding sign, blasting on social media where you'll be um, that morning. But I do recommend um, hosting a station and start, I'm sorry, uh, marketing your station in the weeks leading up to the event. And that just lets people do a better job of uh, planning what, they, what their route will look like that day. So here you can see or maybe you can't, um, we've got all of Dr. Cog uh, way to go tags for social media. So like I said, please do tag us on social. It helps us amplify your posts. Um, and based on the description in your station, we may choose to include um, your station in our pre-event press releases. So again, if you're offering something really fun or appealing to writers, we definitely want the media to pick up on that. So um, think about you know, what it is you can offer at your station and make sure that your description is reflective of that. Last thing I will say before sort of breezing through all of these items is in the past, you know, we have had inclement weather on bike to work day. The best thing you can do as a station organizer is to be aware of what the weather looks like that day Check the forecast as frequently as you can. Check it a week before, check it the days before. Um, and just be aware that you know the weather could certainly affect the number of riders you have at your station. Um, we also have a link here that uh, takes you to a page that shows you trail closures. Um, if you are set up near a closed trail, be aware that that also will most likely affect the number of riders who visit your station. So as I mentioned, going to kind of breeze through these things, but we do encourage you to be environmentally conscious when you host the event. And to that end, we have provided a day of checklist. It's got a mix of recommendations for you, both sort of those eco-friendly um, recommendations, as well as encouraging you to bring items that will just make the experience um, more comfortable for riders. So shelter or shade, get those riders out of the sun. They've been riding their bikes in the open air. They may want to duck under a tent just to get out of the sun for the moment. Um, definitely want to encourage people to have water at their stations. I think most cyclists do ride with water, um, but if we're asking them to sort of go off the beaten path, it is nice to give them something. Um, so as I mentioned too, if you've got any food or anything, um, do be sure to bring those, those items as well. And then most important, have fun. Um, again, we couldn't do this event without you. It's really uh, critical that we get station organizers like yourselves to help us promote the event, to help us make the event something that really, um, you know, is, is worthwhile for riders to participate in. So um, do access this toolkit and um, by all means, reach out if you've got any additional questions. I'll quickly go back to this folder just to talk about some other um, materials we have. But as I mentioned, we'll be giving away physical posters at the open house. If by some chance you're not able to make the open house and you happen to have in-house printing capabilities, we do have the printable version of this poster right here. Um, this is gonna render on an 11 by 17 poster um, size paper. So uh, feel free to print these out on your own if you'd like to or stop by the open house and pick up a stack of them. Um, we also have some social media images in here. We just grabbed images from past stations and we put this Bike to Work Day logo on it. Uh, feel free to use these to market your station. This is actually um, our station from last year. You can see just how crowded it was, how many people were there. Um, and actually it looks very beautiful with the mayor's office in the background. So. Um, more resources for you to use to promote your station. And then I did uh, drop the poster design files in here. So those of you who are asking, can we adapt the poster? Yes, absolutely. Um, we do have an AI version of this poster graphic. You can open an illustrator, make sure you turn on all of the layers um, and you will be able to extract all of these assets. One thing to note is this Joyride font is a very, very non-standard font. 
Um, you may not be able to match this font exactly unless you have it. Um, I would be happy to find out from the designers the name of this font if you really want to be, you know, faithful to this design. If you wanted to edit this copy Joyride at all, you would either need to change the font um, or, like I said, download that font. Um, but if you just wanted to extract these shapes with the text as it is, you can do that in the Illustrator file. So um, definitely uh, feel free to produce your own materials. If you do make your own shirts, we would love to see those. So again, post those on social media and tag us. Okay. So last thing um, I will show you are the, the day of materials and really all we've got in here is this writable station poster. So this is what I was showing in the toolkit earlier. Um, you can actually download this and if you have Adobe Acrobat, you'll be able to type this information in right into the PDF um, or a lot of people will print this out. They'll write on it in a marker or a pen and then they'll post it. And as I mentioned, we'll have printed versions of these in 11 by 17 glossy that you can then write on and post um, physically at your work site. So definitely check out this folder, um, download any of those materials and um, use them as much as you can. And actually, I will share one last thing. Um, we've got a couple of different poster designs. We were asked to develop a poster with a QR code um, just makes it a little bit easier for people to register. So you do have some options when it comes to um, which type of poster you want to display, either the one with the QR code or the one without that just has the URL. All right, so I am going to stop sharing my screen now um, since we've gone over all of the materials. Um, but I did just want to quickly ask any station organizers, and actually I will probably call on one, um, but I did want to open up the, the discussion for station organizers to share some best practices. I know that Rosie and Trez is here from um, REI. Would you be willing to tell us a little bit about your station? Um, Rosie, are you on the line, actually? I don't see you. Okay, maybe she had to drop. No worries. Um, let me quickly respond to some of these questions, actually, and then we can go ahead and, and uh, go to the station discussion. So, um, Tom, you mentioned that last year we sent a link to station organizers to provide updates on trail closures. Yeah, so Tom, we usually do that a little bit closer to the date. Um, we will put together a PDF with a list of trail closures, but we collect those a week before the event so that we can drop them into the PDF. Um, we will do that again as we do every year. Um, but. Uh, I would also say just check the local trail closures map to make sure that we didn't miss anything or that trail closures haven't occurred since we published the PDF. Um, so Philippe wanted to know if we've got Scream and Deal set up with any commercial printers. Um, you know, I don't know about the Scream and Deals. Um, we do have a printer that we work with, um, Tom Ellis over at Print Partners. So if you wanted to get in touch with us after this call, just to sort of share your vision for materials you'd like to print, um, by all means, let's talk about that. But I'm wondering if we might actually be able to print some of those items on your behalf, probably nothing custom, but if you were just looking to print the posters, the posters with the QR codes, mini posters, et cetera, we can just give you um, printed versions of those. No, no deal required. Um, great. Any other questions? Hey, Nisha, it's Rosie. Can you hear me all right? Hi, Rosie. Yes, I can. Hi, apologies. I'm traveling oh, today, no but um, I'd be more than happy to talk about our station. We are so excited. 
Um, I can introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Rosie Entrust. Um, I am with the REI co-op team, um, and we are so excited for uh, Bike to Work Day. We had a really great activation in February, um, but we're coming out stronger than ever for this one. So here is what we have lined up this year. Um, in true REI fashion, you know, like Nisha said, it's echoing um, that great information that this is a really great opportunity to promote your brand. So what we are doing is we are utilizing our REI bike tech to perform free safety checkups while participants come to our station. And we're also going to be performing free bike tune-ups. You know, safety is our number one um, priority with this event. Um, secondly, we're going to have some fun snacks. So we have, we're working with other vendors. We have free coffee by Alpine Start. And then we have free snacks provided by Bobo's. Um, I think music is a awesome way to get everyone excited. Um, everyone loves this event. So we had a really small, um, you know, boom box ish um, at our last event, but we're going to come out with um, two big speakers just blasting some really fun, exciting um, motivation music. So everyone is excited for this day. We're giving away bike related giveaways like bike lights. Um, and then we're also partnering with a few vendors. So we are partnering up with the Greater Outdoors of Colorado. They're going to be on site talking about their phenomenal work with the trail system. We're partnering up with the Denver Police Department. They're going to be on site giving out free locks and talking about bike safety tips. And then we're also partnering Bike Bicycle Colorado. So we're going to have a huge station um, just really trying to use our network and really make our station shine um, as bright as possible. So um, we're actually trying to make it a little bit bigger. So hopefully, Nisha, I'll have some more fun updates for you um, on our next call. That's awesome. And I think we are happy to promote that your station is going to have so many exciting vendors there. Um, I, I encourage everybody to partner up with other organizations if you can. It just really um, it, it adds an extra incentive for those riders to stop by. Thank you, Rosie. How exciting. Who else has ideas that they want to share or plans that they'd like to share with the group? Any TMAs on the call who are hosting stations this year would love to hear what's worked in the past and uh, what hasn't. Well, people okay, are shy fine. today. Okay, fine. I'll say it out loud instead. I wasn't going to call you out by name, Evan, but you're the only TMA on anymore. So take it away. Oh, my. Well, it's in the chat. You guys can, can uh, somebody's, uh, Bill. Phil added some things. Okay, so what what we do, and I think also DDP, because they had a drop a little bit earlier, what, what some of the more successful stations will do, at least in my view, is gather as many vendors as possible into one uh, one location. Uh, if you're fortunate, I guess, like, like us, we have uh, several jurisdictions in our TMA boundary. So we're actually co-hosting three different stations in Denver South, but finding a dedicated food vendor and someone to pay for that food vendor, uh, whether it's yourselves or an in-kind sponsor, uh, since you can't sell food on Bike to Work Day, that covers the food requirement for the breakfast station. And then the other vendors can provide the uh, experiential and or educational swag materials, right? So you're not kind of forcing a nonprofit or some organization who isn't food focused to uh, bring a bunch of green bananas or Nature Valley oat and honey bars to a location. You can have an actual food vendor bring something uh, people will remember and then continue going to your station. I think that is worth the six to eight hundred dollars, what whatever it might might cost. But if you can rally that kind of funding together through partners or in-kind donations uh, that makes things uh, best. Also, if the local uh, jurisdiction is not already committed to doing a bike to work day station, uh, ask them to uh, work on the station because getting permits will be easier if they're the ones hosting the organization because uh, you might need permits for wherever you decide to set up. There we go, that's it. 
Yeah, Evan, you bring up a really good point about permits. Um, we've received a couple of emails this year from people asking, you know, can I just set up at the park? Um, we would love to say yes, but you do need to work with your local jurisdiction and just make sure that you're following any permitting guidelines. And really the reason here is obviously liability, but it's also safety. As Rosie mentioned, safety is a huge priority for all of us organizers. Um, and so certainly want to make sure that all of us as station hosts are making sure that we are, um, you know, aligning with, with local guidelines as closely as we can. Um, I did want to just read um, Phil from CDOT's um, suggestions here. So he he likes Evan's suggestions and um, Evan, thanks, thanks for uh, sharing those. Um, Phil suggests adding some kind of sound. So I mentioned we'll have a radio station blasting music at our station. Um, think of doing the same thing. Um, I like the idea of cowbells. Bring a guitar if you're musically inclined, um, but it, it is quite fun to have that kind of party atmosphere during one of these events. So I think that's a really fun idea. Um, to Phil's other point and what Rosie mentioned as well, um, having a fix-it station or just having some simple bike repair tools at your station, it's gonna be helpful for those riders who uh, may have you know, additional um, you know, ride time after they stop at your station. Um, in case someone has a flat, in case they have some sort of issue with their bike, it is nice on bike to work day to have the resources to help them get back on their, their what is their vehicle for the day. And then last suggestion Phil made, um, definitely want to reiterate this, partnering up makes this so much easier. Um, we are lucky to have great partners with Dottie. Um, and as you saw in that photo I pulled up, we had lots and lots and lots of other vendors, which meant if someone from my team needed to step away to use the restroom or needed to step away to get a water, we still had plenty of coverage at our table so that as people stopped by, we were able to do many things, communicate with them, tell them about our brand. Um, and critically, and I should have mentioned this, um, we do ask that you all keep a tally of how many people visit your station. Um, I will likely send out some additional information in an email closer to the event but we do send out a survey link where we ask you to report that information. And what that does is it helps us gauge how many participants actually showed up on the day versus how many registered on the website. Typically only a fraction of participants register on the site. So when we're able to tally the number of riders that visit each station, it gives us a better sense, sense of total participation. So who else is on the line and would like to share some best practices and Really um, looking to those of you who have hosted stations in the past for this, um, this part of the conversation. Have, uh, Phil, yes. Hey, thanks, Nisha. Um, so this will be my first bike to work day while working with CDOT. I did a good eight or 10 of them while I was at uh, the State Health Department in Glendale. And luckily we have uh, a fair number of other uh, businesses around th that neighborhood, like the city set uh, business when the kitchen restaurant was still there, they were there one year and that was very successful. I know with CDOT one year, I saw Miles, the Bronco mascot out there um, to just, you know, rah, rah people. So uh, like do a one block radius of, your station or your neighborhood and just see, do you want to participate in bike to work day in any way, whether it's like Evan said, give us a fruit basket or show off your stuff, make it a, make it a real community neighborhood event for that station. That was it. Thanks. I just found out today that they're bringing black bringing back the Glendale station. So um, I think people are gonna be really excited about that. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody else wanna share best practices from past station hosting? All right. Well, in that case, I'm gonna ask if any of you new station organizers have any questions. Any concerns or worries about the day of the event that we can um, help you with? All right. 
Well, I don't see any hands raised now that Phil quickly put his down. Um, as I mentioned, we'll go ahead and post this recording to the drcog.org website. Um, and we will also send an email with this recording information and that Dropbox link. So any of you who were on today's call, I will just send a quick follow-up email later. Um, I, I, yeah, I realize this is the first of two calls, so maybe there'll be some more questions. Oh, M Michaela, you've got a question. Yes, hi. First of all, thank you so much for this meeting. This has been super helpful. I am for the Market Station project uh, in Lodo, and this will be our first time um, hosting a station. We're really excited. But um, so since it is our first time, my question is, I mean, we originally signed up to be a breakfast station, so from 7 to 9 a.m. I guess my question is, uh, what what timing do people find most effective? Like, when are you getting the most riders coming through? When are you getting the most foot traffic? Is seven too early? Do we need to stay open later than nine? I just kind of want to get a feel for, for when people have had the most success. This is a great question. I, I feel foolish that I didn't cover this. Um, so we get asked this often, what are the station hours? It's really up to the station organizer. So I say this for everyone's benefit, but Michaela specifically to answer your question. Um, I will tell you most bike riders, they're early risers. Um, so what we find is we typically get our first rider for the summer event around 6 a.m. Um, so my team actually shows up at Civic Center Station around 5.30. That gives us about 20 minutes to set up. Um, and then we get, you know, riders kind of even before the first morning light. Um, it's nice to be able to, you know, recognize them in kind of those quiet moments. There are really just a few in those super, super early hours. I would say the majority of people show up between 7.30 and 8.30. It is also on a Wednesday, though. So if that commuter is really, you know, has a regular work day, chances are they're going to be stopping by the station pretty early in the morning. So um, if you've got the resources to, I might suggest opening up about an hour early, but still staying open till about 9 or 9.30. Okay. Does that help? Yes, very much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And let's see, we've got a couple of um, couple of comments in here. Yep, it seems the consensus is mostly to start the station um, around 6 a.m. I will also say we've got a lot of station organizers who are hosting evening events too. So it really depends on what the staff, um, I guess, staff resourcing looks like, what your goals are. Um, you know, we, we've got, um, actually, we've partnered with Emporium Brewing over in the Highlands, and they will be doing a dollar off beer um, for people who ride their bikes that day. Last year, um, Longmont, in Longmont, there were about four breweries that did some deals that day in the evening as well. So I would just say whatever um, kind of staffing bandwidth you have, um, make that decision and make sure that you promote that on your station description. And then good comment from Mia, stations in the suburbs probably get earlier riders. I think that's absolutely true. I would imagine that in a place like downtown, if you're a suburban rider, you do have to leave a little bit earlier um, to get to your destination. So I would, I would say um, feel free to reach out to us if you want to know um, in the past for a specific location, what the rider count looks like, what those station hours looks like. We can look back through our historical records and see what information we have. Um, and we could even connect you with previous year station organizers. Any other questions or um, suggestions? Well, like I said before, this is the first of two meetings. Um, I'm sure that as you sort of get underway with your planning, different questions will arise. Um, we can definitely talk about those on June 1st if you're able to make that call. Um, but by all means, feel free to reach out to us at btwd at drcog.org. I think Brittany dropped that um, link into chat a couple times. So um, do feel free to grab that. It's going to be um, you know, easy for us to respond to you with with information if we have it. So definitely reach out and um, know that we are here to support you. All right. Well, 
I will probably just stay on for the next five minutes or so, but do feel free to drop if you don't have any other questions. And again, thank you so much for your time today.